Lord Hodge will explain the judgment of the court. The Scottish independence referendum last September was a momentous constitutional event in which over 84% of the electorate in Scotland cast their vote. This appeal, which the court heard as a matter of urgency last July and decided on the same day, was an attempt by convicted prisoners in Scotland to obtain a right to vote in that referendum by challenging, by means of judicial review, the legislation that excluded them from that vote. The background to the challenge was the well-known jurisprudence of the European Court of Human Rights, which this court has supported, that a blanket ban on prisoners voting in general elections is a breach of their human rights. The appellant sought to extend that reasoning to voting in a referendum. The appellants argued that the Scottish Parliament's Act, which established the franchise for the referendum, was unlawful. They did so on four grounds. First, they argued that the ban on their voting was contrary to their implied rights under Article 3 of Protocol No. 1 of the European Convention on Human Rights, and they also uh, submitted that the ban breached their right to freedom of expression under Article 10 of the Convention. Secondly, they argued that the ban breached EU law because a yes vote might result in their losing their EU citizenship. Thirdly, they argued that the Franchise Act involved a breach of international law because Article 25 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights had been interpreted as extending the right to vote to include a referendum on self-determination. And fourthly, they submitted that the common law supported a right of equal and universal suffrage and that its denial was contrary to the rule of law. Both in July and in the written judgments now produced, the court was unanimous in, in rejecting the second, third and fourth arguments, but was divided on the argument about the European Convention. As I say, the court was unanimous in rejecting all but one of the challenges. It held that there was no breach of Article 10 of the Convention, the court also held that the EU argument failed, uh, both because the outcome of the referendum would not determine whether citizens in Scotland retained their EU citizens, and also because EU law had not as yet recognised a right to vote. The court also unanimously rejected the challenge based on international law, which was not incorporated into our domestic law. In relation to the common law challenge, the court recognised that the right to vote was a constitutional right, but held that the common law had not developed so as to recognise a right of universal and equal suffrage. The court was divided on Article 3 of Protocol No. 1 to the European Convention. It provides, and I quote, the high contracting parties undertake to hold free elections at reasonable intervals by secret ballot under conditions which will ensure the free expression of the opinion of the people in the choice of the legislature. In the majority judgment, the court held that the article was designed to ensure a right to vote in periodic elections for candidates for the membership of a, a democratic legislature and could not be interpreted as enshrining a wider right of universal suffrage. The majority noted that the Strasbourg court had over many years repeatedly and unequivocally rejected uh, the, a broader interpretation of the article. While as a matter of legal policy, the court could see the force of the argument that some prisoners should be able to vote on a con at such a constitutionally important referendum as the Scottish independence referendum, the article did not create such a right. As the court was divided on the issue, Lord Newberger and Lady Hale produced concurring judgments that addressed the interpretation of the article. Lord Kerr and Lord Wilson dissented because they interpreted the convention as guaranteeing effective political democracy and the article as providing a wider right to vote, not only in elections to the legislature, but also in referendums which determine the form of the legislature. It was open for, to the Supreme Court to go further than the Strasbourg Court in developing a convention right, and they would have done so. Thus, by majority of five to two, the court dismissed the appeal. <laughs>